Genesis 13, starting in verse 1. So Abraham went up from Egypt to Negev, and he and his wife and all that belonged to him, and Lot with him. Now Abraham was rich in livestock. Abraham was rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. He went on his journey from the Negev as far as Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning, between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar, which he had made there formerly. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Abraham, at this point, is still Abram, right? He is just, in the last story, what did he do? He just left, and we saw how bad he was at loving. We had to be honest, he wasn't very good at loving because he betrayed his wife to protect his own safety in the last story. But in this, we see almost a complete turn. We see Abram realizing where his blessings come from. Do you notice that? Because he keeps building altars to the Lord. He builds altars... Because he's blessed. And he's very rich in livestock, in silver, and in gold. Now, what's the problem with this? In our culture, we have money to dictate our wealth. But their, their wealth is a little more fickle. There's an advantage to having paper money. There's a disadvantage, too. It's currency. And, and if you leave currency underneath your mattress, it may lose value, but it's still money. Now, if you do that with sheep and cattle and livestock, you put them underneath your mattress, they suffocate and die. Don't bury your livestock underneath your mattress. It's a bad idea. But he figured out something. Something we hear repeated in the New Testament. And it's a phrase that if we get, we don't have to build walls and protect our stuff anymore. We don't have to be worried about, oh, what's going to happen tomorrow? When we realize this, that every good thing Given and every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shifting shadows. He had this figured out long before we even get to God coming and sending his son and giving blessings that are beyond anything he could have imagined. He had wealth, yes. We have blessings in the form of salvation. We have blessings in the form of the Holy Spirit. We have blessings in the form of God sending his son for you and me. Now, these blessings are so much better. And even we will forget where they come from. Even we will set up walls and protect our blessing. Because... We have this concept that God is limited. And I don't know where it comes from, but we all have this concept that God is limited. It's as though if we give out love and we get trampled on, and we allow ourselves to serve and to be fully given to God, bad things will happen. As opposed to what Christ says, that good things will happen. Verse 5, we're going to see the conflict that started because of his blessing. Now Lot, who went with Abram, also had flocks and herds and tents. And the land could not sustain them while dwelling together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to remain together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram and the livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. Now the Canaanites and Parasites were dwelling in the land. So Abram said to Lot, Please, let there be no strife between you and me, nor between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brothers. Is not the whole land before you? Please, separate from me. If you do the left, then I will go to the right. If you go to the right, then I will go to the left. Lot lifted up his eyes and saw the valley of the Jordan. That it was well watered everywhere. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, 
as you go to Zoar. So Lot chose for himself all the valley of the Jordan, and Lot journeyed eastward. Thus they separated from each other. Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled in the city of the valley, and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked exceedingly and sinners against the Lord. Did you get that story? Did you get it? He is presented. He says, here is this beautiful land where your livestock. Remember, we're talking about that money doesn't really matter where we keep it. That livestock does, right? And if we have stuff to feed them <clears throat> and water them, then his wealth will grow and flourish and become even better. And he looks out at Lot. And he sees Lot, and he says, okay, choose whichever you want. There's this Canaan land, which, well, it's a, a nice, nice for a desert. And then you have this land that looks like Egypt, fertile by the Nile. This is beautiful land. And Lot goes, this is an easy choice. I'm going to take that beautiful land. And Abraham didn't care. You know what he said, let there no, be no strife between us. What is he really concerned about? He is really concerned about walls here. He's very concerned that they're not there. He wants the relationship with Lot over better blessings because he took his land that would help him to increase his riches. Because he's shown it again. He knew where his blessings were coming from. He knew that God of the mountain... Is God of the valley. He knew that God of the Nile was the same God of the desert. And he knew that no matter where he went, God was his blessing. So he chose the lesser. He did. He chose the worst choice so that he could maintain that. And God turns around, and the Lord said to Abram, After Lot had separated from him, now lift up your eyes. Look from the place you are, where the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. For all the land which you see, I will give it to you and to your descendants forever. I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth, so that if anyone can number the dust of the earth, then your descendants can be counted. Arise, Walk about the land through its lengths and breadths, for I will give it to you. Then Abram moved his tent and came and dwelt by the oaks of Mamre, which are in Hebron. There he built an altar to the Lord. He just chose the bad land and God says, hey, I'm going to bless you with everything you can see. Lot took one way, you were supposed to take the other. You're going to have everything. And what did he do? He built himself another altar to the Lord because he knew exactly where his blessings were coming from. But we know where this story ends, don't we? Because what, what happened? There was a cheat in the middle of this story, wasn't there? And it says, this was before Sodom was destroyed. What? Do you notice? It doesn't even really fit. It just, he's going through and he goes, and he moved his tents as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, exceedingly and sinners against the Lord. Hint one. Hint two. This was before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember that beautiful land we were talking about that God's about to destroy? Oh. Just, you know, subtle hints that God's giving. But he went to that choice, and imagine being there. And you have a choice between taking what you think will be better for you. You'll be more blessed doing. And love. And caring about other people instead. And Lot did what most of us would do. He took the better land. He did. Because he saw that it was good for him. And in doing so, he had to see what Abram was left with. Abram was left with the worse off. And it's so weird that in the middle of this story, God goes, I am the one who blesses. It is not because you strove. It is because he is the one with the cattle on a thousand hills. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. 
and how tempting it is for us to get in our little mindset and think it's what we do. Bootstraps. Love the term just because it's funny to watch. Right? You pick yourself up by your bootstraps. Where do you land? Yep, figure it out. Okay. You're going to be sitting. Okay. But that's our concept is that I did it. I've done something great. And in reality, if the Lord chooses to bless it, he blesses it. And in reality, God controls much more than we can even see. Was there any way for Lot to look out there and go, okay, these people are so immoral that God's about to destroy them? No. Because even Abram was having questions about that. He goes, he goes into how many he needs, how wicked it needs to be before God will finally destroy it. And he's looking for ten righteous and five righteous. You just can't find them. So there's no way for Lot to know. But there's no way for Abram to know either. And too often we're tempted to look at this and say, well, Abram was smart. But in reality, he was loving. He didn't allow the fighting between the herdsmen, right? Because th they were trying to occupy the same place. They were trying to stay together. And there's this fighting between the two groups. And the only thing he requests is, can, can this fighting end? Can this strife end? We're brothers. We need to act like brothers and be brothers. It's sad that it fits us, isn't it? Once again, there's always a trick in most sermons. This one is. The trick is this, we haven't been talking about money or cattle or any of that. We're talking about our blessings. Those same blessings we get in the Lord and get so protective of. We're, we're so convinced that if we build the right amount of walls and we make enough divisions, that'll be better. And there's this fighting, and what do, we, what do we always go with? Well, there's fighting. Well, let, let's take the better. Let's take the better. But that's not what he looked for. He didn't say, we're fighting, let's figure out who's better, let's, you know, let's arm wrestle. Thumb war. He doesn't. He says, okay, here's a bad choice and a good choice. He goes, which one do you want? What? Do you want the good one? Of course I want the good one. Okay, then take the good one. He ended all the strife because he didn't fight for it. Now, that's a strong model to us. Because too often we have to fight and fight. And nobody ever wants to go, I love you. A gentle word turns away wrath. Proverbs is, is deep in the fact that it goes into these little snippets that give you no explanation. A gentle word turns away wrath. And what was this? What was Abram giving? A gentle word. Take the good. I know where my blessings come from. I, I'm not going to be less blessed just because you're, you're blessed too. I, I, I don't miss out because you're also included. You're my brother. And at the end of the day, that's what matters. It doesn't matter who ends the game with the biggest toys. It doesn't matter who wins the fight at the end of the day. How many of us have had a disagreement and you realize it messed up your life for a little bit? You, you got mad at somebody and you let it dwell and you were just, Ugh, and it hurt you. You were lashing out at them and you were getting hurt. Because you had to be, what is that, right? You had to be the winner. 
You had to be the most blessed? And you lost? In God, we don't have that same concept. We have a paradox that tells us that we have no blessings outside of Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. We're told repeatedly that everything good is going to come from the Father. And God is not always concerned about who is, who wins. Who comes out on top? Because in this story, who came out on top? Lot did. Lot got everything. Lot was the victor in this story. If we were having the arm wrestling match, he won, okay? And you know who got trampled underfoot? Abram. He got thrown out into nothing. You go out in the desert, I'm going to take this beautiful land over here. You have fun over there. And that's really what happened. He got trampled. Isn't that terrible? Right? We're always so afraid of getting trampled or coming out and getting all the way out there and sharing God and somebody going and it hurting us and it knocking us down a notch and knocking us down a notch and us losing. But I'll tell you who the loser is. What? Because in the end, God doesn't say a lot. Your descendants are going to be so many that you can't count them. Go count sand. You live in a desert, go count sand. Well, I, I can't do that, God. Okay, then you get the point. You can't count your descendants. But Abram allowed himself to be cheated, to get the second best, to be second, to be a servant, to his nephew, who didn't even get the promise from God. It's not like God came down and said, Lot, I want you to go out into the wilderness. No, he said, Abram, I want you to go out in the wilderness. Lot tags along. Welcome to the story. Now, Abram could honestly have said, he could have gone, well, I'm more right than you. God gave me a promise. He didn't give you one. You're just tagging along. Scurry off in your desert area. Wow. And he could have won. If it was an argument, he could have won. He could have said that God has given me the blessing. God has sent me. God is taking care of me. God is showing me. God is using me. But he didn't want to. And we've all been in a place where We held something in, and it was a fighting. And we decided to have that intellectual, that emotional, that fight. But God gives us this offer of forgiveness. But do you, do you know that there's a requirement of forgiveness for forgiveness? See, it kind of works, right? He makes it very clear. He says, if you do not forgive, I'm not forgiving you. What? If you do not forgive, you will not receive forgiveness. Well, when he taught his disciples how to pray, he said, forgive us as trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And quit building walls to protect ourselves and just trust God that he's the one who gave us the blessing in the first place. He's the one who gave us this and for us to fight on who's more righteous makes no sense at all because we should actually fight on who's the better sinner. Because Christ goes, I didn't call the righteous, I called the sinners. I didn't come for healthy people. Are you healthy? Yeah? Okay, well, you, you have fun. Are you sick? You come to Jesus. 
Oh, wait, Jesus, that's a little backwards. I did not come to call the righteous. I came to call sinners. You want to compete on something? Who's more forgiven? He who is forgiven much, loves much. Words of Jesus. Because all blessings are in Christ, and it is more important that we be proclaiming God than trying to figure out who of us is the most righteous. Who is the most righteous? Give you a hint. Okay, I know my hands are above my head. I apologize again. I get excited and raise them. Who is the most righteous? Who's the only righteous, huh? Trick question. Because at the end of the day, none of us are righteous. None of us have hope. None of us have anything. Because when you read this, it says this certain phrase, in Christ. Which blessings? Every spiritual blessing. Every. All. If you could name one, it's included in Christ. Because he's the only one righteous. If there's anyone tonight who is not in Christ, you don't have any blessings. You have no righteousness because the only righteousness is his righteousness. If you, having heard the word, if you believe it, you repent of your sins knowing you are not righteous. Confess him as Lord, being buried with him in baptism. Living faithfully for him so that you can have all the blessings greater than anything Abram had. Or if there's anybody who just needs prayers or anybody who wishes to be added to this church here, we ask that you come now as we stand and as we sing. <laughs>